Great to you. You're watching this part of a live feed that we're about to jump in. And we're talking about storytelling as a brand and how you can actually stand, you know, apart from all the copycats that are out there that don't have a story. And we're going to be using a couple of movies that a lot of people can relate to and also classic stories that we grew up with that, you know, literally show you how the hero became who he became and what message that story actually had. So if you're watching this section of the video, please type in the number two because then that shows us you're watching a replay of the show. I can see Paul has just tuned in. How are you doing, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in. Duncan Mosaka, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> Hope you're having a fantastic day right there. We're just talking about storytelling and how you can actually utilize that, um, you know, to build your brand, to, you know, support yourself with word of mouth, mouth marketing. Where's my... I can't tell stories today. <laughs> word of mouth marketing, um, in as much as us human beings, we do not understand facts and figures. Um, I mean, we understand facts and figures, but we retain stories because then we can have something to allude to. So while people are joining in the lunch um, and learn, I'm going to be... Um, you know, introducing the show and just really, um, you know, letting you know that if you're running a business uh, online right now, it's the hardest of times and it's understandable, but you should be having a profit from it and you should actually be enjoying it. And um, if you're um, also doing it in, in, in an enjoyable, you know, sort of manner, you should be able to create for and relate to your audience so that they too can know, like and trust you. And how do you do that is by telling stories and letting people know exactly how you can help them, when you can help them, and things of that nature. So while other people are going to be tuning in, I'm just going to be, um, yeah, I'm just going to go go ahead um, since a lot of people can watch this in post production. All right. So if you look around you, everybody has a startup. If you look around you, there's um, an, an app that just started. There's a website that pops up every five seconds. Um, but nobody knows what that entrepreneur does. Nobody knows what that entrepreneur represents or what their values are. Nobody knows what they stand for or what they're against. They're just a me too, um, you know, site. And I speak that respectfully, you know, um, you know, considering there's been a me too campaign that has been going on around. So that's the reason why so many businesses are failing because nobody is actually seeing the differentiating, um, you know, factor of why you are completely different to Sally or to Jack or to anybody else who's got an app um, that does similar things, um, you know, to you. Now, um, Tav Shamano, thank you so much for tuning in. We're just talking about storytelling and how it actually differentiates, um, you know, people within, you know, the market where it's now bombarded with cool apps. You know, everybody has something to put out on the market there, but there's not a lot of differentiating values or uh, points of difference. And I'm just saying, if you do have a compelling story as an entrepreneur or as a business, it would actually help you stand apart. And talking about storytelling, you told that story tough about those that um, bank robbery, um, you know, and I still remember how it all went. And, um, you know, you, you got the whole crowd um, cheering because of your good storytelling antique. So this is something that maybe would be of value to you. And also um, you can tell your um, you know, your clients how to or teach people how to do it. I'm learning it as we go, you know, so this is something that like I'm also learning, like, I, like I've just mentioned, and I've just learned one new trick that figure out what video or what, uh, what movie or what classic story um, do you like best and do you like the way it flows and then just make it your own in as much as figure out are you... Um, you know, going in from some sort of tra uh, traversity and then there's always a happier ending with different stories. So figure out if if a classic tale like, you know, Rapunzel or Jack and Jill or something like that has the way that you were brought up and the, the hardship that you went through and then, you know, how you, you, you went past that. People would like to know those stories, you know. Um, 
that's what makes you unique and that's what makes you totally different um you know to everybody else who's on the market there all right um if we look at stories of startups like Apple, stories of startups like Facebook, we know how Mark Zuckerberg started. He started off in a dorm room and he only just wanted this platform to be used by, um, you know, students at his, at, as, at his university. And all of a sudden, um, you know, he now, you know, opened it up and now we're using Facebook as a platform to also tell our own stories. You know what I mean? So... Once you do that, you actually connect with the audience because when you tell a story, what happens is people um, assume um, that this story is about them and then they actually start personifying that story relating to themselves, which makes it genuine and real to them, um, you know, and it makes it understandable to what it is that you're trying to, to relate to them then. Now, Steve Thompson, thank you so much for tuning in, my brother. And hopefully you're having a fantastic day there in WA. So, you know, your story is supposed to be designed to connect with your audience and to actually provide them as a different point of view to who you are within the market, you know? If it's a happily ever after or if it is a continuous journey, they need to know that so that they can associate who you are with your products and what, you know, the market has to offer them. Some people don't quite understand why it is actually important to tell your own story because we are all different. All right. We are strategically made different so that we are unique within within this universe. You know what I mean? And some people think that having a brand story is left, um, you know, for, for, for bigger companies or for, um, you know, for the media or if somebody calls you up, that's when you should have, um, you know, a story to tell. You know, at the end of the day, if you're not ready with that story, you can tell that it hasn't been practiced enough and you will miss out on the points that actually make the story relevant. So your brand story is no longer sort of controlled by the media outlets or waiting for somebody to call you out on a, on a podcast. Every single day that you are living, every single day that you are on some sort of social media, you are telling a story. Now, are you calculating that story in as much as it feeds into your values? It feeds into what you want your audience to know about you. You know, it's no longer about, you know, waiting for people to, 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 to look you up and then read about your story. You are telling your story every single moment that you are in touch with, um, with an audience for the first time. You know what I mean? So one would even say that this, this whole thing, um, the, the, the media is now running stories based on what we are telling them. The media is now running stories based on what you're putting out there. So the more you're not putting out your story, the more the media doesn't have anything f from you and the more your audience doesn't know what to um, you know, make of you or make of your business or even know who you are. Do you know what I mean? Because then once you have a story that your clients can relate to, your customers become your advocates. You've given them something that they can easily remark to their friends, something that they can easily talk about, which makes it a whole lot easier. If you are only talking about the projections or you're talking about numbers and figures, people don't remember numbers and figures at all. Yesterday, Elon Musk took the payload, um, you know, to, 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 uh, out to space. Whatever figures were used or whatever numbers made that rocket to go faster or it's the biggest, nobody remembers that. All they remember is three things, Elon Musk, Tesla, and the rocket went to space. That's the story that he created. Do you know what I mean? So every single thing that you do actually starts to create and formulate that brand story that you want your audience to know about you. And then it creates the traction of them knowing, liking and trusting you as an individual. Cause then your, your customers are now your advocates. They're now the test makers and they're giving power to the stories that actually resonate with them individually, you know? So, so you might be thinking to yourself, Oh, this whole storytelling is very difficult. You were born, you um, have some parents or you have siblings or you have, you went to school. All of those touch points are stories that you can bring into how your brand came to be. You know, 
the way you were brought up is probably the way you now want to treat your your wife. The way you were brought up is maybe the way you 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 associate your clients as family because you were brought up in a family environment. That is unique to you. And if people know that, then they will, you know, utilize that as a point of difference to every other person that's out there. Because let me tell you something, people might not remember the name of the person who started um, uh, or who who did anything you know people might not remember the, the 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 name of the person who maybe started a kick kickstarter campaign yesterday or a go giver campaign but they refer to it depending on the ingredients of that story and that's the power of storytelling you know stories are what people are going to remember so even if they forget the names they forget the faces rarely would they forget how a story made them feel so make sure whatever you're doing, you are narrating that story. You are telling it in the best light. Every single thing that you do right now, you're in the eyes of your audience. It all matters. You know, I don't know um, if you guys know about uh, Oprah and uh, on one of her episodes, she she gave away cars. Does anyone remember that uh, episode of Oprah when she gave away cars? cars? If you remember that story of Oprah um, giving away cars, can you type in the number one? Um, I just want to see if people know about this story. If not, then I can then relay this story to you. Do you remember the episode when Oprah gave away cars, um, you know, on, on, on her show? If you did, James, how are you doing, my man? Steven. Do you remember the episode? If you remember the episode, can you type in the number one? Tav Shamana says he remembers. That's pretty cool. Do you remember what the brand of the car was? Do you remember what the brand of the car was? Uh, Tasha, woohoo. How's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in right there. Do you remember what the brand of the car was? Does anyone remember? If you, if you, if you remember what the brand, yeah. So nobody remembers what the brand of the car was. And n nobody ever will. Yes, Chris, Christopher, thank you so much. Nobody would ever will. Apparently, it was a G6 Pontiac. I've never heard of that brand. But at the end of the day, it just really testifies, um, you know, as, as to the fact that people remember how that made them feel. The emotional connection with the story, but they don't remember the brand that actually, um, you know, made that happen. So stories transcend whatever we do as, as, as a person. And if it's compelling enough, guess what happens now? I went in and I researched this prior to this show, and now I know of a brand called Pontiac. But before that, all I knew was the story that got me closer to knowing about this fact. All right? So figure out, is your story... Uh, remarkable enough are you doing things that wow your customers are you doing things that people will talk about at a barbecue because there's these emotional connections you know such um you know as these they're almost impossible to 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 delete in people's memories you know so if you're focusing your business on logic and on numbers and on benefits etc i mean and on features of, of what your your product does Believing that these, this is what people will remember. The emotional gut we have is the one that guides us to making decisions. And guess what happens? Our body filters what's important and what's relevant. And people only relate to stories that they can remember. So if you're trying to put out ads there and you're not putting out a story that is remarkable or something that people would remember or some sort of you know, tag, I mean, some sort of anchor that puts people back to some classic story or a movie or something that is something they remember personally. You're just probably wasting money and time. Now, uh, Christopher says, here they, here they big, uh, then went out of business like seven years ago. Oh, absolutely. Well, but then now you're talking about them. Nobody remembered who they were, you know? Because people relate to stories. They see bits of themselves in whatever the protagonist is doing. So maybe when you maybe have borrowed your friend a car, you might just relate to being like Oprah who gave her whole audience, you know, a car to, to, to take home. 
And then they, they start an, uh, associating with whatever, um, you know, the, the, the conflict that you are going through as an entrepreneur and they relate to that. Because you're supposed to create for and relate to your audience. And if people don't understand or relate to you, it's hard for them to actually understand or trust you as a person. Because people might be going through problems of their own, but they're not going to know that 5 out of 10 dentists approve of this medication is going to help them. They want to know what that medication does and there lies in the story for the brand. You know? People want to share the joys, the rewards of what the main character is going through up until they finally achieve their goals. And once you can get people on an emotional level, it makes it a whole lot easier for them to retain the story that you're telling them. You know? Esther, how are you doing? It was really, really good talking to you earlier on and, you know, um, relating to our stories, etc., etc. We're just talking about how storytelling is very important and, 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 and what we're doing these days in order for our customers to understand who we are, where we've been, and why we really want you know, them to purchase from us or to work with us. You know, Because once the story starts spreading, it's, it, it becomes relatable. Everybody gets their own version of it and then they make it their own. It becomes easy to recall. It, it becomes easy to share. You know what I mean? So whatever you're doing within your business, create little sound bites that are easy for people to share your content. Instead of you selling, 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 tell those stories about, you know, something that reminds you of, um, you know, maybe there's a movie or there's an event that's happening there. Comment about that and how it relates back to your business. It's easier to recall that because it's already in mass media than you trying to break, you know, the noise and, and, and try and tell, you know, something that people are not ready to listen to anyway. Because we are humans. We, we relate to storytelling. We relate to sharing as, as um, in our communities, you know. And I think when you were growing up, um, everybody spoke about the, the nine planets. And we had this statement saying, my very earnest mother just sent us nuts, please. And now I can remember that it, it, it stands for Mars, Jupiter, Earth, certain, whatever it is, the nine planets. It's something that we would talk about and joke about, um, you know, in the playground at school. And it's a remarkable story that, you know, you easily learn something. There's a hidden message behind it. You know, you might remember it from, from school. And we were taught this as children. Some people say, my very educated mother just served us nine pies or something like that. You know, you would identify, you would identify with that story in as much as it, it simplifies a grand concept. It's entertaining and it's educating, you know, and it, it makes it easy for us to swallow the facts and it makes it you know, easier to, to, to pass on to the other people because it makes us look smart, you know? So if you've got those little sound bites that relate to how your brand was built, how you can have all those social triggers while you're telling your story, they are happily shared amongst your friends and then you create word of mouth. It makes it a whole lot easier. So don't be afraid to bring out your story, share it and talk about it because that's what makes you unique. You know, stories are what helps your business grow. You know, because the mission of any business is to grow, right? The mission of any business is to, um, you know, help as many people as possible. And if you're using storytelling as a marketing tool, you will be able to reach more people that would never have heard about your services or the benefits of your product. So what stories are you telling by showing up every single day online? What stories is your website telling? What stories is your Instagram telling? Because telling stories that are not connected to your brand or that are not unique Maybe you might entertain, maybe you might be viral, viral, but you're not offering value to, to, to yourself or people are not going to quite remember who you are. You know, people, people will always remember how Steve Jobs 
um, you know, got fired from Apple, people will always remember how he made that ad that, you know, was the first commercial ad on the Super Bowl. People talk about those stories because they're remarkable. You know? So when you're developing your story, you really, really need to identify how does your product fit into what's already happening in your customer's story um, psyche. There could be a movie that's going out there, you know? Like right now, my little girl is three years old and she likes watching Nemo. But for some weird reason, I sat down so that I would understand what it is about um, Nemo. And I realized that we had been taking her swimming, all right? So now she wants things that are associated with the water. So what is happening around your audience right now that could trigger whatever story you tell them? Because she can't even understand what, what is going on there that the father misses out or, or, or I mean, the father follows a, a fish that's retarded, etc., etc. She, she doesn't understand all of that, but she understands the environment. She understands the water because now she's learning to swim. So that's who your client is. Your client is probably going through something right now. What is around them that you can manipulate as a story that your brand can tell? How does your brand help your customers? What problems are you solving happening right now in the customer's periphery? Because if you just go out there and, and not explain, you know, how this is going to assist them, it will be difficult for them to understand what your actual story is. So look at storytelling as part of your, 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 your branding, as part of your business marketing. The more stories you're telling, the more value you're putting out into the marketplace. And it's easy for you to relate and tell people, oh my God, there's this guy who shows up every single day at 2 p.m. AEST. That's a story right there that I'm crafting and creating every single day. It's easy for you to share that part, but it's going to be hard for you to share what I talk about. You just tell the people, hey, listen, at two o'clock, go and watch this guy. That's already a story that helps and perpetuates my brand. So what is it that you're doing that is remarkable enough or that is consistent enough that people can talk about and now, uh, you know, promote you and use word of mouth? Because it's only you that's doing that. And that is what makes you different, you know, from from the rest. Everybody else is hashtagging me too. I mean, without this, with, with, with all due respect, but everyone is putting out a website out there. They're trendy, cutie, cute names, cute apps. You know, how are you going to stand out, um, you know, in a sea of all these startup and, 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 and entrepreneurial co copycats? Find a classic story that would help develop your own brand story and start connecting with your audience provide a product or a service that they won't find anywhere else. And guess what the result is? They have a happily ever after that you actually need to survive. So go back, look at those classic tales. How does it relate to your business? You know, find what, what hook you have that relates and then it just put in the details that marry and match your own story. Because it's only a hook that is needed for, for you to set your, your startup apart from, from all the sea of noise that's out there. So you're weaving in your journey into a classic and unforgettable tale. And you're doing it every single day. You're doing it with everything that your audience touches, your website, your apps, your communication um, channel, whatever it is. You know? Because... At the end of the day, every entrepreneur doesn't have a straight story. You know, it might, it's not a, it's not like a, a designated path that people take. It's, everyone has a one of a kind trajectory. So by you harnessing all of the things that have happened within your life, maybe you can start off from how you were born, where you were born and all those things and find a story that relates exactly to that. And once you have it, copy that framework. Why invent mediocrity when you can copy genius? All these stories have worked already. If you look at it, um, Nemo is a story of a father who's looking at daughter. Is that not um, the, the same as, um, what's that, uh, who's that guy who, who, who calls in and says, I don't know who you are, but I'll find you. Can you type in the name of that movie? 
that's exactly the same storyline. You know, and if you look at um, um, stories like, um, you know, The Last Dinosaur, you know, he's, he's happy, but then he can't get his mark there. And then he goes on a journey to self-discovery. And then when he comes back, that's when he can look after his whole family. Everyone goes through all of those self-discovery journeys. You know what I mean? Yes, it is Taken. And Nemo is exactly the same framework as how Taken is like. You know? So figure out what, instead of just watching movies, can you see, you know, th parts that you can relate to? Because not everyone's story is the same. My one is a journey of voyage and return. And it's all zigzaggy. It goes from modeling to being, uh, you know, homeless to now having a beautiful wife and family. All of those things, you put them in there, somebody will find something they can relate to. You know, and when you see this into the market, when you, when you see this into the, in, into the market, people will now start just sharing your story. It's now your journey and you now differentiate yourself from everybody else that's out there. You know, because your story is going to inspire people that want to work with you, your new partners. It's going to inspire clients. You know, it just really starts with finding out who you are, where you are right now and mirror it with, with a movie or a classic tale and just follow the breadcrumbs because everybody is really, really the same. You know what I mean? You know, so some people go past the tragedy, maybe you you had to go past an illness in order for you to um to 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 discover your business you know and you had to go over some sort of hardship in order for you to be able to help others use that experience to springboard others that also need that change that are going through the same problem as you cuz we're here to live we're here to learn we're here to contribute so the more stories you're telling there people relate to them it makes it easier for you to sell because that person now understands who you are. They know you, they trust you because they feel like you've gone through the same thing. You know, maybe at school you were like a class clown who loved to make people laugh. And then you became, uh, you know, compelled to start creating a social media app that helps people, you know, relieve, g g go over their pain. Consider how you got there, you know. The things, the trials and the tribulations, all of those things are touch points that we are really embarrassed to talk about our past. But all those things will help us to actually connect with people because you were not just born yesterday. And people understand. They want to know why you do what you do. And if there's a reason for that, tell them. And when you're good enough in telling those stories, figure out a way to build them. Or maybe your story is a regs to riches example. You know, nobody started good. Nobody started knowing what's going on. A lot of people started their businesses in a garage. Don't worry if, you, if it seems like it's going to embarrass you. People want to hear that story and that's how they connect with you. They're not going to know about your 5 gigabytes or 5 gigahertz product that you're selling to them. They actually appreciate storylines that they can easily follow. So there's no need for you to start reinventing the wheel right there. Figure out, is there a classic tale that closely resonates to you or that you absolutely love? And maybe you didn't realize why you love it so much because that, st that tale is how your life has become. And now just instead of calling it Rapunzel, call it Christopher, call it Tuff, call it whoever. And then fit, fit in the details. Because you're not the only person that went through what you're going through. And guess what? You get more respect from the people that are going through that. And you can help them by actually helping them through your story. So everyone has a unique story that shaped who they are today. And you will be continuously telling those stories every single day. So the moment you start acknowledging what your story is, you can now tap into the power that already exists in the framework of stories that are already out there, which makes it easier for people to understand. And then you just have to fit in your own experiences. You know? Because no one has seen the world the way you have. So share your experiences. And you, you empower others in that process. You already are a hero where you are. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of 
media out there talking about this, talking about that. But we easily forget that we're already equipped with gifts that we can share. And if you believe that you're the hero of your own story, guess what happens? People would start for finding you and, and trying to relate more with you. And if you've got things in place for them, guess what happens? You figure out a way to build them. You know, your story remains constant, but the media, all the other Facebook, the, 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 the way we put out the story changes. People will seek out what is concrete. So instead of trying to be anything else, find out what is your story? Who has gone through what you're going through? Marry those two together with your own facts and be the hero of your own story. Somebody somewhere is dying to get past what you went past. Now imagine what you can do for them. All right. Let's continue this conversation at the bottom and let me know what story you're going to be telling in the future. Bye for now.